This is the third in the series looking at feedforward in GPC. The first video reminded viewers that the default MPC approach uses future values for the target. And you can see a typical GPC control law here, and there's the term PR times R future, which shows how future target values affect the current choice of input. However, what we've also shown is that a typical MPC or GPC algorithm seems to behave worse when you include this future information, which seems somewhat counterintuitive because we know if we can anticipate, we should be able to do better, and yet GPC is doing worse. This chapter, therefore, will demonstrate simple techniques for making better use of feedforward information, and it means we need a slight modification to the default GPC algorithm for this to work effectively. So what are the insights that we've got so far? We demonstrated that the default definition of GPC includes information about all future targets, but it does not use this information, and there's the keyword, wisely. The use of a finite, and usually small, control horizon means that the class of available input predictions are not in an appropriate position to track target changes which appear much further ahead within the prediction. So the mismatch between the degrees of freedom you've got available and the target changes you may want to track. So what might we want to do? The bottom line is we really want the input changes of our degrees of freedom in the predictions to span where the key target change happens. So you can see there's the key target change, and you can see I've got my input degrees of freedom here to span that. Now here, you'll notice I've taken NU equals 10, which is quite large, but I've started at this point here, so the set point change is only six samples into the future, and therefore I'm able to come up with an input trajectory which is appropriate for tracking this particular target. And here's the key thing here. The amount of future information about the target should not exceed the control horizon by more than a few samples. So you'll see here, I've only looked six samples into the future to see this target change, but I've allowed myself input moves that go just a bit beyond that, and that's worked well. Now, the bottom line is we cannot easily give an analytic definition of the best amount of future information. But what we're really saying is the amount of future information we allow ourselves should be much less than NY. So here's the basic proposal. You assume the future target information is given by this, and you'll see we've got all NY terms, RK plus 1, RK plus 2, all the way up to RK plus NY. But what we're going to say is only information up to NA samples in the future can be used usefully or wisely. So instead of that, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we know NA future values of the targets. So we've got RK plus 1 up to RK plus NA. And then beyond that point, we're going to assume that the target is now fixed at RK plus NA. So we're not going to use information about, for example, RK plus NY. Now, for convenience, we're going to define this NA as the advanced knowledge parameter. How far in the future are we going to allow ourselves to see, or how much future information are we going to put into our performance index? Now, what's the repercussions of this change? The default term that comes out of GPC, this PRR future, has got NY terms in P and NY different values in R. If I restrict my advanced knowledge, then in essence what I'm doing is I'm saying oh, I've got up to RK plus NA, and then afterwards all these R terms become the same. Now why that's significant is if you look at these P terms here, PNA up to PNY, they are all going to be multiplying the same value. So what I can do is combine those coefficients into a single coefficient. So we'll do that here, and you'll see what I've done is I've simply combined the terms that all multiply the same R value, and I've shortened this R future vector, so it now only goes from RK plus 1 up to RK plus NA. And the last term is multiplied by PNA, PNA plus 1, all the way up to PNY. 
And what I've done is I've given this new uh, vector a slightly different uh, name. I've called it PRA rather than PR, so the A to tell you that I've restricted the advanced knowledge. So this is the subtle change that we're going to make to the GPC algorithm, and you'll see it is relatively simple. And our conjecture is that the best choice for NA is similar to NU, because if it's much bigger than NU, it means our degrees of freedom in the input trajectory do not match where our possible target changes are happening. But if those two are similar numbers, then there's an overlap, and we should get a sensible answer. Now, you might allow NA to be one or two samples higher, because you know some anticipation is useful, but not too much. So the remainder of this video will give a number of examples to demonstrate how behavior changes as you change this advanced knowledge parameter, NA. And the examples will make it clear that the best choice for NA is not fixed in any sense, and it would be difficult to come up with an analytic solution. And it depends in some loose way on the choice of output horizon, the choice of control weighting, the choice of control horizon, the model, and so on. So in practice, you'll need some form of offline testing in order to identify the most appropriate value. Here's the example then. So let's start with video 6.3, example 1, which is on the Google sites if you want to run it yourself. And you'll see I've chosen NY20 and NU5. And here I'm starting with NA equals 20. And when you do that, you can see that the predictions are a bit messy here. They an anticipate too much, and you get a bit of a uh, poor behavior before the target actually happens. If I reduce my advanced information, so here I've said now I'm only going to allow myself to see target changes up to six samples in the future. And what do you notice? Now the behavior I get is quite good. We get a certain amount of anticipation, which we expect, so that we can track this output effectively. And the errors, either side of the step change, are reasonably well balanced. If I reduce NA even further, so here I go down to NA equals 1, you can see that this behavior is actually worse because there's no anticipation. I don't start moving until after the target has happened. And because there's no anticipation, the tracking errors will actually be larger. Here's a different example then, example two, and you will see the same sort of insights. If I use a large NA, here 15, I get too much anticipation and behavior that's really rather unhelpful. If I choose here NA equals six, again you can see the balance of errors before and after the set point change is about the same, and you're doing roughly as well as you can. If I take NA to be too small, then you look at the tracking errors here, and you see it's much worse. Example four, and again, you'll see the same message. So here I've got NA equals 20. I've got all this messing about before this target happens. Not particularly good. If I take NA equals five, the errors are sort of roughly balanced on either side of the target change. And you can say, that's not too bad. If I take NA equals one, I don't respond till after the target has happened and therefore you're not quite as good. So what's the summary? We've demonstrated that it's straightforward to exploit a user-selected amount of advanced information within GPC. Essentially, what you do is instead of PR, you use PRA. And the mapping between the two is trivial. Common sense, backed up by simu simulations, illustrate that the best choice of advanced knowledge is roughly the same value as the choice of control horizon. Now, here's key point. The best choice of advanced knowledge is usually greater than one, but less than the output horizon. So what have you got? You've got something along the lines of NU less than or equal to NA less than NY. Where's the best, best value for NA? It's not immediately clear, but using common sense in these examples, we can see that it's somewhere in that region. Tend to be that you're going to need trial and error to make a more precise selection, and we'll look at that in the next video.